Another day, another podcast, and sad news to report, we're only going to do one a week for a while. Oh man. He is the wind, and she is the wave, and together they make up the band they call the wind and the wave. They're not related. Uh-uh. They're best buds. Uh-huh. They're BFFs for life. Hashtag BBIT dubs. It's the Dwight and Patty Show. The Dwight and Patty Show. It's the Dwight and Patty Show. It's Dwight and Patty. Hello, welcome to episode... 11. 11 of the Dwight and Patty Show podcast presented by The Wind and the Wave. And yes, that's right. Uh, we are only going to do one a week for a little bit. Back to the normal. Oh, sedu- man. How come, schedule. right? Uh, because, I'll tell you why. Because it takes a lot of time to do these. And um, it doesn't seem like it does, but it does. In terms of preparation and stuff. And also, um, uh, I'll be, I'm going back and forth to Houston. And I, you know, I'm trying to get more of our demos done. Yeah, but on our, and on you're, our starting on a re- you're starting on a record uh, next yeah, week, right? Uh, you don't want me to say that? Why not? I got to edit that, I don't think. Why? I don't want people to be like, you're breaking COVID rules or whatever. I don't know. We've both been locked down. That's all I know. Yeah, I'm starting Here's what, right. here's what I'm going to say about that. They're like, okay, so Texas is opening back up slowly. Maybe now. should, maybe shouldn't. Maybe we don't maybe, know. I, I don't really know. Maybe should, maybe shouldn't. I think, I think, like society has to open up in some ways. Has to open back up in some ways. I, I don't know yeah. what the right way is to do that. But I, your wife shared a post on Wander Salon the other right. day that I forgive really everybody. Liked. It's right. just like everyone has different opinions about of, of yeah. about how they want to lead their life. Like this is no different than. Like the religion that you choose to, like, it's just, you know, you do you, like whatever you're comfortable with, you do that and be kind to people who, who think different than you. Right. Well, and someone also, has to I mean, go to even, work or someone has to go to the store or if, if you don't have to do those things, so protect yourself and your family and, you know, make your choices, you know, but turns out, turns out even, uh, infectious diseases doctors have doctors have different opinions <laughs> yeah even even doctors i this girl i know um that i've known since elementary school um, her name is jessica i don't know if i told you about her but she's um she's a doctor here in austin yeah. but she went to new jersey to help out because they were like they had like so many patients um and even she had like a quarrel with another doctor or an anesthesiologist or something because they were practicing medicine in different ways and they had different opinions. Um, yeah. I mean, the and, anesthesiologist across the street from my house is like, um, I, I guess it's not a big deal in terms of what I've, I haven't seen anything. He goes, I, they were planning on me having all these extra hours and I was going to have to get a condo and all this stuff and nothing. You mean here? Yeah. Yeah. I think in terms of the world, like here in Austin, Texas, and maybe Texas as a whole, I think we're relatively unaffected in comparison to a lot of other places. They say it's just because we haven't tested. We're 48th out of 50 states in terms of testing numbers. Oh, Oh, man. Well, Texas cares about some things and not a lot about But yes, my my lockdown ass is going in with a band that's been locked down. They were extra careful and haven't even left their houses for six weeks because they didn't want to lose the record you know what i mean yeah well or, i hope uh, the slot we had so and it's well, in I'm my happy, studio by I'm the happy. way and they're staying in my house yeah i know so you're kind of you kind of have a lot of control over the project right. and i'm happy that you're back in the studio i'm happy that you're working again i know you really miss that and you need to make some money so I'm i do you know that. ultimate ultimately though i miss just i don't i want to work on our record that's what i, I keep know. spending every day on and that's way more fun to me and i got you know, 40% through the new one today already. Oh, and I was hoping to get a little, yeah. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I will and say, also- Kevin, so that song that with the working title, Possibilities, Kevin has that one yes. stuck in his head. And I, he was like, nice. he was humming it this morning. And I was like, excuse me, are you humming a new song that I haven't even finished writing yet? And he was like, <coughs> yes. sick. I was like, well, that's pretty cool. 
sick. Um, by the way, we celebrated our fourth wedding anniversary. Oh, happy! When was that? That was today. Is That's yesterday. why y'all were out there. Well, oh, well yes. happy. Well, yes, but yeah, it, our wedding anniversary was yesterday. April happy 29th. fourth wedding! Happy fourth wedding anniversary. Thanks. We didn't really do much yesterday except for we grilled at the house. We did like shrimp kebabs with pasta and ooh, I learned how to make pesto. Do you know that? You don't have to use basil to make pesto. Can I tell you that I don't like pesto? You're going to say I like, I no, would no, like no, no. your pesto. No, no, no. What, what I'm going to say is pesto. I didn't know Look, this. You got came. your tea. It came. You got <laughs> yes. your tea. My Skip. amazing wife. That's because she's a sweetheart. She is nicer than both of us put together. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Pesto. You've probably only had uh, traditional pesto that's made with like basil and pine nuts. Yeah. You can make pesto with anything. I'm. You can make pesto with parsley and walnuts. You can. Make but why pesto, is that pesto then? It's still pesto. It's just. It just has different flavors. It's still pesto. I made a pesto with cilantro and. That's like calling a cat. No, no, no. You're, no, you're no, calling no. a kitty cat a dog. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm so not. I could take blades of no, grass no, no. And, and, and acorns, blend it all up, and that would be a form of pesto. What makes it a pesto then? I think you have the green, you have the cheese, you have the nut, and you have the oil. So mine had cilantro, because I've been getting these imperfect box that's that company in Perfect Foods or whatever. We've been getting produce boxes from them. And uh -huh. for whatever reason, I got a shit ton of cilantro. And I was like, great. I don't know what to do with this. And my mom was like, you can make pesto. And I was like, no, that's basil. And she was like, no, you can make pesto with anything. And I happened to have also, well, Sally let me borrow, not borrow. Sally let me have some of her Parmesan. And I already had cashews, which I know that you don't like cashews, but cashews are my favorite nut. So I grab a handful of cashews. I roasted them in my oven. And then I yeah. put it all together with Parmesan and cilantro and avocado oil and olive oil. So fucking good. Just saying. That I would have to try. I don't know. You're a good cook, perhaps. Perhaps. But I, I don't think that that's, again, I think we're still calling a, a cat a dog. No. I'm not sure. No, you're not. Um, but you were asking you, about my mug earlier and I wanted to show it to you. Yeah. Your mug says fuck first. It says fuck And I said, first. like, is that like if you're in a fight or whatever, is it maybe best just to like pound it out and see if that fixes anything? Is that kind of the vibe no, that but Dan Savage guess. is giving? No, but good guess. Okay. Good guess. Here, see, what Dan is Savage. it? This is one of my favorite podcasts, you guys. It's the Savage Lovecast. Yeah. You made um, us listen to hours of that in the car. Um, yeah, weird. I mean, stuff, and, 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 and in this in the Sprinter van, and yeah. Scott and Nick were both in the back looking forward, like, "What is the fuck is Patty listening to?" Yeah, yeah, sex stuff. Um, yeah. Fun fact: my therapist recommended I listen to it, but we we won't get into that. Um, no, so fuck first is something. It's helped. Better. It's helped you. Oh, Period. the podcast? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, but this mug. This slogan, fuck first, is he talks mm. about this around, um, around Valentine's Day or like anniversaries or like anything like that where you're like celebrating your love or whatever, date night even, like just like whatever, because yeah. a lot of people like part of that celebration for a lot of people is going out to dinner. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like to... I don't like, I don't feel sexy with like a full, on a full stomach, you know, like I don't really want to do the, oh, I see. Do. Yeah. You know, I heard some so, talk about that this morning, actually on another podcast. Some, yeah. They were saying they like to do it in the morning and the other person was I like, I don't yeah, really love me. it in the morning, but get ready, get like, like get yourself halfway ready for date night. Do the yeah, do. But see, once I'm done with the do, I want to go enjoy, sleep. And oh, well, I won't go sleep. I won't go sleep. But not if you're hungry. Won't go sleep. I can skip a meal. I know it doesn't look like I can, but I can. Um, okay. Where do you find favorites on? <laughs> if, 
if I save something on Instagram, where do I find the favorite? You know? Okay, so, so if you're on your profile, top yeah. right, top right, yeah. thingy, and then, and then there should be like a menu. Oh, and then you saved, go down. Yeah. yeah, saved, yeah. And you can have okay, multiple so, folders for saved things. Oh, cool. So like let you can me, label I've, I've, them different things. Hey, I've saved one. I've saved one thing. One thing. Okay. I did it today because I just wanted to be able to read it to you. I just figured out that you could even do that on Instagram. Okay. Um, This is from a therapist. Okay. It says, let me be clear about something. Those all over the place feelings you've been having, they are symptoms of stress, not personal failures of yours. Do you feel flaky and inconsistent? That's because your brain doesn't know what news to brace for next what next month will hold. Tired easily? That's because your brain's burning literally 10 times faster than usual. Can't seem to focus? That's because your brain has temporarily shut down some functionality in your prefrontal cortex, the part that juggles complex tasks and planning due to the stress response. Feeling creatively blocked? That's because your brain has temporarily diverted all its creativity, aka ability to solve novel problems, to how do I avoid dying? while in a narrow, slow burn, fight or flight state. Suddenly don't give a fuck about future-based goals, projects or dreams like you used to? That's because your brain knows being short-sighted is a safer way to cope right now. Your plans, creativity, energy, focus, motivation are on a yo-yo right now because your brain believes you need to be extremely adaptive. You will not be on this roller coaster forever. Be, ca- be patient with your brain. Sincerely, a positive psychology certified coach and fellow human. Love it. Love that it. That is at, at Alexis Rockley, A L I X I S R O C K L E Y. Send that to me so I can be sure to repost. And I don't know uh, how to do that. Okay. How cool. do I do that? Oh, I think I do. I use post? that little like paper plane, right? Yeah. Yes. There you go. Or whatever that is. Yep. What is that supposed to be? I don't know. It looks like a paper plane. That's what kind of what I think it is too, like a little arrow, okay. like a little. Okay, and then you hit that, and then you select my name. Yeah. Okay. So I sent um, it to you, but I thought that you. was good. I love that. Though, though, I will say, on a personal level, do you not I've relate still to that? Felt, I've still felt creative. Um, yeah. I think for me, no matter what, at least so far in my life, creativity and music has been the place where I escape to. And I can, it's what defeats all, all comers. Mm. Everybody comes into the ring like, I'm going to fuck you up. I got your dad's death on your mind. And I got a little COVID-19 butter salt on top of your fucking, you know, skin cancer donut. And I'm like, going to work on this song. You know what I mean? And it just goes away until the song's over. And then I'm totally a lunatic again. But mm. I'm I, able um, to transfer stress into creativity. That's awesome. Work. That's awesome. I I don't have an easy time doing that. Like what you just read reminded me of something I've, I think I've said on here before. Um, something that Esther Perel said. What is that? What does your mug say? You're my, You're my favorite. favorite. Something that Esther per- Perel said. Um, okay. I don't know who that is, but okay. Yeah. No, you do. Don't you? Love her. Love her. Is it a person we know? No. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Esther Perel is a psychologist, psych a therapist, a counselor, a psycho. Perel's she's... oh wait, let me look at her picture. Thank you. But she's got oh, I have seen her face, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, she's why. got a couple of her own podcasts. Very interesting stuff. Like one of them is uh Where Do We Begin with Esther Perel? And each episode is um, a couple's counseling session recorded. They are fascinating. I don't fascinating. know if I want to hear that. But one of the things, this was, this was outside of, um, I can't remember in what context she, she was saying this, but she said uh, anxiety and creativity are at odds with one another. And I find that to be true for me. Like, well, which has got to be tough because yes. you're anxious a lot. Is that the fucking problem? Finish the goddamn songs. You're too anxious. Let it go. <laughs> I know. There's like, there's no safety or security in the song. It's like, it'll make you feel better in the moment, maybe. But then, like you said, the second it's over, 
you still got COVID, your dad's still dying, you still got to pay the bills. I'm still freaking out about all the things, and I, I have a hard time shutting that off. So, yeah, but wind and wave is one of the only things paying the bills these goddamn days. So, I know, and I, I, I put a lot, I'm, we're not going to go there <laughs> right now because I don't want to. Before I start on emails, um, yeah, did you have I'm a nice day? Yeah, I'm ready to start on emails. Yes, I had a, I had oh. a, I had a great day. Did you have day. a nice day at the lake? Well, I didn't get to ask everybody. Did you have a nice day at the lake today? You can look at Patty's butt and all sorts of things on the interwebs today. I just um, want to say that that was me very much stepping outside of my comfort zone. So for those of you who did not uh, see my uh, glorious tuchus on my Instagram okay. today. By showing your tuchus, it's stepping out of your comfort zone? By or showing wearing yourself a thong, in general. Wearing a thong bikini in public. Mm. Oh, I've actually public. never done I will that say, before. Today well, was my first like, day. Was that a thong thong? I mean, it yeah, wasn't no. like a string thong. Right. It was a like, tea bag. I'm, I'm st that was still the first time I've ever done that. Yeah, I didn't find it. I mean, look. I don't find Hold on, your audio Whatever. is crapping out. You're, hold on, your audio is crapping. God damn it. I can hear you. Oh, I, I can hear you now, but it's being funky. Is it still being funky? Nothing was funky about what you just said. Okay, I don't, uh, you know, again, I don't know what's going okay. on with some okay. of that stuff, but I, what I was saying is, is I don't, um, see a difference between like a bikini and underwear like it's all the same who cares it's fine but I guess I, it takes I, a lot of courage to show your butt I, don't I, know. Ag I agree with you I've just I don't know if courage is the right word I don't think that's the right word I just you know I mean you know I was just I was just I've been so conservative for a, a good part of my life that um I just never done that before I kind of I kind of did it for Kevin I kind of did it for me and you should do it for you fine. and but i mean I know, kevin being a nice byproduct i know but i just it was our anniversary so i was like oh some some you know he didn't want me to say that we went to pay spend park on the podcast i was like why i'm like i'm probably going to talk about it he was like no because i don't want everyone to start going there it's like pretty good right now i don't want everyone to go there and i was like everybody knows about pay spend park well that everybody. and like first of all not I don't have like a billion listeners on the podcast. Second of all, they don't all live in Austin. It's going to be fine. Well, most of them live in the UK and they're not even right. allowed to leave their home. So I'm glad you said UK because I want to, I want to talk about something. Okay. You look very serious. Well, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little upset, a little upset because we were supposed to have a live UK merch store by now. And we do not. And every time I post about our merch store, I get a lot of comments and, and DMs from people in the UK being like, hey, uh, I think your UK shipping is off. Hey, uh, how much to ship to the UK? And I'm like, it's too much freaking arm and a leg. It costs me an arm and a leg. Yeah. So it's costing you guys an arm and a leg. And I was supposed to have a UK store live by now, but guess why I don't? COVID. No. Okay. The merch company cannot find one of the shirts. The blue shirt with the wolves on it. The good one. Can't find any of them. Have you asked? Oh, the, but did they receive them from Joe? They received the other ones. They didn't get But they those. never they never got I've, that box from Joe. It's not Joe, it's Jim. And I mean, I, Jim? Like, I've already got Jim talking with them. He's already CC'd on the emails. I haven't heard from them in about a week, but like, and, and it, it is true that COVID is uh, just making it long drawn out. It's, you know, taking more time because of that. But like the store is live otherwise. And I was like, oh, surely I'll give them a week and they'll find it. And then we'll update the store and then I'll share the store and then it'll have all the shirts on it. Nope. They still haven't found it. 
and I'm a little well, who, frustrated by that. Do we know whose fault it is? is? Is there anyone we can point to or no? It's just like a, well, I don't know. Well, Jim is like, if it was them, I would his, want him to reprint it. I know. I know. Jim is like throwing his hands up. Like, dude, I don't know how you didn't get them. Everything was there. Is it possible right. that they're at the, you know, the, the rehearsal space or something? It's possible. It's just taking time. And I'm is there like, anyone that can look at us? Is there anyone that can look at Stereophonics Place to see if they're there? Maybe I need to email. I need to email Jim again tomorrow and just like check in and see what is up. But I just wanted because I think you would need to go through Disco to see if I it's know. possible to I see just... if someone could see if that box is there. Do you think I should just throw the UK store up, even though we don't have all the yes. shirts there? I'm just okay. Fine, I will. Yes. I'm just. I just, just wanted you guys the, and, to know. And just and put the I'm... caveat that one of our favorite shirts will be coming back up, even if we have to reprint some. You okay. know, it is what it is. I'm just. I wanted you to know that. I wanted the listeners in the UK to know that. And, and in Europe, frankly, because if you buy from that store, it's going to be a hell of a whole lot cheaper to get it to you. But I'm just, I'm frustrated because I had every, all my ducks in a row and everything was ready to go. And it just, you know, it didn't work out. It's totally fine. Just put it up. Everyone can buy the shirt that is there and then they can come back and buy the other one. How amazing is that? Okay. Um, do you have anything else you're trying to yes. discuss? Okay, you've got I lots of things. Like you never have things. I have feelings. It's like this this new podcast you have has made you know how to talk. I'll no. just here. You know what? There's like 20 minutes left. I'll just go. No, that's not. I don't actually feel like I'm this good on the other podcast yet. I'm like not good on it yet. I just <laughs> I have things on my mind right now. Um uh, I want to I want to know. Well, first of all, I want to talk about this because I have questions. And mm. secondly, because I think, I feel like we should talk about it. Um, there's going to be a Sims live stream benefit show. Is that, am I getting that right? Yeah. You'll have to explain what, it, what Sims is. And everything okay. Now. Well, I've talked about it on my socials before, but Sims is like, so there's this organization in Austin called HAM and it's the health Alliance for Austin musicians. And they help people, they help musicians and honestly, and people, I think in the music industry that either don't have access to healthcare or uh, don't have great healthcare. They help cover the bills for medical stuff. Um, if you don't make a certain amount of money per right. year from, from music. Yeah. Right. It's a great organization. The only Amazing. other one I know of is in Seattle. Oh, really? Well, cause Ian Moore from Austin, who was one of the original people in ham moved to seattle and is getting it oh, going there that's amazing yep. um well sims is like the mental health arm of ham so they are strictly related to mental health services named named after a musician from the 90s named sims um who unfortunately killed himself and hence I believe his parents and band and a couple of the people kind of started that because he had no one to go to and i think in maybe his note or something i don't know really but wasn't able to find anyone to talk to and certainly couldn't afford it so hence sims yeah okay i didn't know that thank you very much yeah i love sims right. i have been i have been a beneficiary of sims for several years now they helped me pay for my therapy sessions and not only my therapy sessions, but my husband's therapy sessions and our couples counseling. And they would be helping me out with my group therapy right now. Um, but they're extremely underfunded and they're not taking on any new, uh, any new clients really. And they're not adding existing, they're not letting existing clients add on, uh, any new services. So, and they, they're, the waiting list has been, has been going on for months and months and months. So I'm near the bottom of that for some things. And anyway, they approached us, right, to, to do a live stream benefit show with some other yeah. musicians. Do you know anything one, about that yet? Because I don't know anything. One of, the board, one of the board members hit me up. I don't know who, many who are doing it. I know Tim and... Um, Who's the singer of Plain White Tees? Tim and um, um, Tom are doing a you know, song swap on there. I oh. think the Jamestown Revival guys are doing something. Sweet. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, stuff like that. I think it's one stream a day for them for the month for Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, we're donating all of our the proceeds that 
come in during, because I think there's just going to be donation buttons during the stream or something, or maybe they'll tell you where to go after. I don't okay. really know. They're just going to kind of hand off to us. We'll all go to them. Okay. I need to, I need to coordinate because I need to let the people know how yeah, they need can to access reach out to it. That, and the number that reached out to you, Carlos, you need to reach out to him. I texted him He's today a, and he didn't get back to me, but I'll, I'll, I'll hit him up tomorrow. Okay. I'm excited about that. And I'm really happy that they approached us. Yeah, that's May 8th at 5 p.m. Central. Okay. Yeah, I'm, and we're going to be on there about an hour. Okay. I'm also really honored because they inquired as to whether I might be interested in being on the board. Yeah, I mean, he was saying we're trying to expand our board. And I was like, well, you know, if you thought about Patty, you know, she's a huge advocate. And he goes, of course we have. He goes, well, but I just don't have her number. And I haven't really, we don't really know each other. And I said, oh, well, let me hook you up. Huh. You know, they're just looking for advocates that, that that's part of their arm. You know, that's part of their tribe. And I was like, yeah. well, this is, couldn't be more her tribe than that. For sure. And because of what they're trying to do, just so you know, they're trying to take Sims national. And they need some really passionate board members to try to do that. That is amazing. I'm so excited, I mean, but how I'm also, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. They won't be expanding their board till they can have board meetings again and stuff, but right. you are on the list now for when the people, when they need nominations. Yeah. And I would much rather be on that board than be on my HOA board, honestly. And totally. Um, That's a board. We, he, this guy is a guy who served on the Grammys. He served on a couple other things. And he told me, I really feel like I've accomplished things over there. That's amazing. Oh, that's so great to hear. Um, I'm really excited by that. And I don't know, like, the logistics of it all. Like, I don't know if I can be a beneficiary of Sims and be on the board. You know, who knows, though? You, Honestly, may, not, you may make enough money this year where you wouldn't be able to anyway, based on sure. some of the Kelly record and everything. You never know. Honestly, just the fact that they asked made me so happy. Yeah. So. Well, just the fact that they know about you. and Yeah, yes. And... It. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm already, like, I don't have to toot my own horn. I'm already, I'm already doing the thing that I would do. I'm already passionate about mental health. I already talk about it all the time. And hey, but you know what the else fact though? that someone in the local community has noticed that, you know, like, it makes me feel really good. You know what else? It's what? okay to toot your own horn. I know, I'm just not good at it. But it's okay to. I know that. Thank you. Because... Some, especially in today's music business, no one else toots it for you. That's for goddamn sure. Let me just read you this real quick. This is on their site. The history of the Sims Foundation is the history of Austin music. We were founded in 1995 by community members mourning the loss of beloved musician Sims Ellison. Since then, Sims Foundation has been passionately serving the Central Texas music family, ensuring that every music professional has access to affordable, personalized mental health care from providers who understand them. And uh, I can't look on there and you can, see, you can need to just put up Sim's picture right here in the video. Okay. He was a beautiful boy. He was in a band called Pariah who were signed, I think to Warner brothers or something or Geffen Geffen. Yeah. A big band at the time. And, um, uh, you know, um, the Austin rehearsal complex guys, which is where all of us rehearsed back in the mid nineties when we were living in Austin, like deep South Austin, right? Yeah. It was such a rad place. Um, and, um, it was a hang. It was a, it was a type of rehearsal place where people went and hung out all day. Hung out. We all had rooms, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, especially bands that were signed and I was touring with different bands then. And it was just cool. It was like a community of guys. And then when one of those guys gets lost, I mean, I'll put it to you this way. I watched, the OJ Chase and his bron white Ford Bronco in the office of the ARC rehearsal studios with about eight other musicians who were like, what the fuck, it? OJ, what's going on here? You know, before the trial or anything. So, um, you know, it was just a great place and he was a part of that family. And, and those guys, I think the founders of the ARC were two of the guys that helped start Sims and fund it early on. So you know, Austin was that kind of community then. Maybe it is now. I don't know. I'm not as connected Same. as I once was. Um, but, you know, 
life happens and and also when you feel connected to Aberdeen Scotland and, and Austin it's you know what I mean yeah no I feel I think, connected I think, to everywhere we go I think as a nationally touring act uh when you have your sights set on things like beyond your community you kind of you do become disconnected a bit but I'm glad they reached out about this because um you know, it's near and dear to your heart. And obviously mental health is not necessarily for me in the same way, but suicide for sure is. And, uh, uh, you know, I want anyone who needs the help to, to that, you know, from, from feelings of, I don't, no one does, I know, I, no one deserves the curse that is me here type mm -hmm. of vibe. I'm just feeling isolated. To have someone, to have someone to talk to. Yeah. Uh, and they need more funding. And by the way, just right now, you can just go to Sims Foundation, I think it's .org or whatever it is, and you can just look it up. And you can donate right now. They're taking any donation numbers, $5, $10. Every dollar goes towards, it's a nonprofit, goes towards helping those people get into therapy. You could pay for one therapy session, basically, for somebody, you know. And all the therapists that work for them also take reduced rates. Am I correct about that? I believe so. Yeah. They, I think Sims kind of like covers, uh, like, like for example, it's based on what you make. It's based on your income. Right. A flying thing in here. It's based on your income. So like we have those I everywhere. Pay, the little gnat thingies. We yeah, have them everywhere. Everywhere. Um, I pay a reduced rate to my therapist and then I think Sims covers the, the rest. Oh, that's interesting. I think but some she, therapists she, actually just lower their rates too for those for the musicians. Yeah. And I also, mean, just so you know, there's a lot of therapists that if you call them and go, I can't, I can't pay 150 a session, they'll go, well, What do you got? Mm -hmm. And you go, I got $70. And they'll go, Cool. There's a lot of therapists. Yeah. I would I say mean, probably the, more that do that than the other way. The therapist that runs my group. She did that because she knew I was a beneficiary of Sims. And I, I let her know, I was like, hey, I really want to join your one of your groups, but I, I'm not sure that I can swing it. Um, Sims isn't letting me add any services. And even though I've seen you before and I don't see you anymore, it would be counted as a new service. And she was like, it's not a problem. But let, let's just have a conversation. Let's talk about it. And I'll, I'm happy to work with you. And so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There, yeah. Most therapists are actually there for the right reasons. They want to help people. Yeah not get rich right now if they make I, a nice living in the meantime great. i don't think many therapists are rich uh not the right kind <laughs> anything else maybe i don't know you have an email oh yeah i have too many so the other thing the other thing and they're getting old so i have to get through a few of them we're just got to be on here a second okay. the uh the other thing that reason where we're going down to one a week though which i never got to finish my thought which was like an hour ago Sorry. in the conversation was because i have to learn our first record and in my off time i have to learn i don't know how to play six of those songs so you know i'd rather i want that stream on may 23rd to be good and so um you know I got to work on that a little bit. And then, so in my off time, I'm going to, I'm going to do that instead of podcasting so much. And then also, um, Evan has been, you remember that cartoon he did of me? He took the image yes. from the last live stream and he's With cartooning the us. Wait. Yeah. But he's, okay. yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Well, he took the new, the image from our live stream photo and he's cartooning that for us for the next live stream. OMG. That's awesome. Yeah. It looks cool too. I think I have like one or two shirts. You remember the ones oh, that he his? designed? Yeah. Yeah. I think I still have I one or two of those left. They're nice. not on the store because there's only one or two and they're special. Put them up. Maybe. Put them up. I have them right here. Hold on. Let me, let me show you. Her slamming things down on the desk is just her, you know, she doesn't know how audio works. Here she is. We'll, we'll I, I lied. Um, I might, I you literally, no, no, I literally might only have this one left. Oh. Yeah, my kid, what was he, like eight then? Designed that. Um, maybe we should just give that away on the next, you know, we'll do it. We'll give that away on May 23rd. Okay. 
And if it's too big for you, you can cut it up and make it into something else. It won't you know? be too big because it's an extra small. Who's going to fit into that? Oh, we're going to give it away to the lucky lady of her choice who can fit into an extra small or wants to give it to their child. Yeah, it'll be a nice Or put it on their wall. A I don't know. shirt for their six-year-old. All right. Okay. Um, so we have, a, we have an email here from Julie Graff. It was a while ago, but we're going to rock it out. Okay, I know the rules. Compliments first. Dwight, by forcing Patty into this podcast, you have really made the wind and wave so much bigger than the music. I've been so inspired, and it's been especially appreciated the last couple of weeks through this craziness. Thank you. I love your don't give a fuck attitude. You are who you are, and that's awesome. Thank you. You're just wicked talented. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Patty has three as well. What? All three? I listen to a lot of music. I have a lot of favorite songs and lyrics. Never in my life have I heard so many songs that have lyrics that sound like they were taken directly from my brain. It's kind of scary, really. Two, I'm so inspired by your passion for always improving yourself. And three, your husband has an awesome name, same as my husband, Kevin. <laughs> I thought she was going to say compliment. awesome. I thought she was going to say awesome abs or something. And I was going to be like, yeah. Sneaky be. Kevin compliment. I like it. I have so many questions that have popped into my head since starting to listen to your podcast several months ago, but I was way behind and you were on your hiatus by the time I was thinking of those questions. Most of them will be more appropriate for the Feelings Club podcast at this point, but here are a few for now. And you can send your questions to the Feelings Club podcast at gmail.com or you can call us on the banana phone at 725 Feeling. That's 725 333 5464. Continue our. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't act like you haven't, you don't start, you, you aren't talking better now. Give me a fucking break. I think I'm just in um, a good mood, which is weird because I've forgotten to take my pills the last couple of days. Maybe that's. Maybe that's. Maybe, maybe that's, it's time to stop for a stop. bit. Maybe it is. If you're in a good mood without them, hello. Stop it. I need to consult with my doctor. Totally fine, but you should consult him and say, hey, I'm feeling fine. It's a woman. Right now. Them, I said. Oh, I thought you said him. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> a listener at one point asked if you'd have a commentary version of any albums after Wreckage, and you said maybe for human beings. I would love that. Is this a possibility? I'm sorry, what? You didn't even hear the question. Human beings. Oh, my God. I thought it when was a I question. When I read the emails, it is disrespectful to lovely Julie Graff to not no, listen to no, her questions. No, no, I am listening. I just, I got sidetracked for a second looking at my tea bag. Okay, are you here? Yep. Are you ready? A listener at one point asked if you have, if you'd have a commentary version of any albums after wreckage and you said maybe for human beings i would love that is this a possibility okay first of all how is that a question exclusively for me why can't you answer it wasn't the fucking but question? you didn't even hear the because i always answer the question did you hear the question i think we now should have heard it i think we should do a track by track for all the for all of them i don't know why we haven't okay we'll do a couple of podcasts where that's what we do we'll play the song great we'll play we'll play a verse and a chorus of the song and then we'll talk about it. Great. Deal? Deal. Okay. So yeah, well, they're coming on a podcast. Thanks to you, Julie Graff. How about a live acoustic album? Um, I, I, you know, go, first off, can you check out the key sessions in America? I'm not, maybe they're not even from yeah. America. But how can you, can you put a link to the key session somewhere? Yeah. Okay. I we, think they we just did came out on their like iPlayer or whatever that is. Yeah. So I'll, I'll link that. We recorded a great session in Scotland for the BBC and it is an acoustic show uh, in front of a packed house and it's pretty cool. And um, I think iPlayer, iPlayer, you can access it if you have a VPN, you know, like a private network, because then they don't know that you're in America. If you're in America, if you're in the UK, you already know what that is. iPlayer, everyone has it. Okay. But here, I think if you have a VPN or ExpressVPN or any of the virtual private networks, you can act like you're in England and be able to watch it. So you'll have to look into that yourself. I don't know how to break the law. I'm just telling you <laughs> that that's how I would do it if I was breaking the law. Anyway. They, they did email me today and they, they said, we were going to put this up for 30 days as contracted, but we'd like to put it up for a year. Is that okay with you? And I was like, you can put it up as long as you want. Leave it up for 10 years. All good. Yeah. 
I'm glad they like it so much. Yeah. But so that would be the place where I would go listen to a really good Feelings Club style acoustic performance. The other place I would recommend listening to that would be our next stream on May 23rd when we play our entire record from start to finish. From the wreckage, the first record. Right. We'll play that start to finish. And that'll be acoustic and it'll be great. What are your thoughts on the resurgence of vinyl? Are either of you into vinyl? I have been a couple, I have been for a couple of years and have wreckage and human beings on vinyl. I'm sure I'll have more questions as time goes on, but for now, just keep doing what you're doing. You don't know how much it means to me, Julie Graff. Thank you, Julie, for emailing. Thank you. Uh, any thoughts on vinyl? I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. Although I do feel like I can't say I, that I love it if I don't even have a vinyl player. I've been wanting one for, oh, I used to have one and then I got rid of it because it was like giant and bulky and I want like a small modern one. I haven't gotten mm -hmm. one yet, but I do have vinyl. I think it's cool looking. I think it's cool sounding. I like the physical, you know, put it on. We the only thing. like, and, and, and just as a, you know, fun fact for us, we will only press vinyl. I mean, we won't be pressing CDs anymore. So you either listen to us digitally on, you know, the Spotify's or whatever, or on vinyl. For instance, our newest vinyl is only available on vinyl. So. Yeah. And the last um, record, we didn't do CDs either for the last record. So. Yeah. So that's the only way we're even offering anything physical anymore other than shirts and whatnot. Um, new e another email? Yes, please. Short oh, I, one I, from had, Eric. I had one thought, uh, one other thought about Julie's email. In the beginning when she was complimenting me and she was saying um, how much she liked that I'm always like improving myself or whatever. Yeah. At the beginning of this year, um, I said to myself that I think self-acceptance is going to be like basically like my new self-improvement. Like that's the way I'm going to try to improve myself this year is just by accepting myself. And that is going to be in and of itself a huge improvement. That's, I just wanted to say that. The other day you called me or texted me frustrated and you said, I just worked on this new one for so many hours and I, I only have one thing I like and the other stuff I don't like and I feel like I wasted half the day or whatever. My thing was like, why are you working on it at all? Just pick up the paper and if it's coming, let it come. And if it's not, go do something else. And if, and I think just separating from that, that need to check something off a list mm -hmm. will make it to where you go lay in the hammock and you'll go, Oh, that is the line. And you'll go back in. That's the way, it, that's the way, we didn't get in this business to work. I know. We got in this business to be creative and, you know, there is a lot of work that comes into it, but that's not one of the parts. It's a different thing. It's not work, you know? And the second yeah. you can stop thinking about it as work and checking off lists, I think is when you, you in accepting mm -hmm. failure in yourself and not having a good day writing lyrics is when you'll win every day. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe also part of it is just accepting that, that these are just roadblocks for me. Like this is, that this is part of my struggle and part of my journey. Yeah. hundred percent. Whatever. Please read the Monday. email. Yep. This is a very short email from Eric Nagel. Uh, good buddy. This says this episode, it says season two, episode six, this episode, which one was that one? Have Can to look. you look and see which one what that one was? Sure. Episode season two, six episode was six. was uh, Love Me Whole when, when we talked to Jeff. Oh, okay. He said, this, abs this episode was absolutely incredible. You mm -hmm. all blew me away. I've loved all the episodes, but this one was my favorite yet. I just wanted to share that. Cool. I wonder what about it made it so awesome. I don't know. Yeah. Write us back and tell us the things you liked about it, Eric, and uh, ask a few questions about it if you have any. Oh, wait, here's a follow-up from him. Season two, episode eight from Eric. Watching now, Dwight looks like he's ready to fall asleep during the therapy talk. <laughs> <laughs> what was episode eight? Was that Matt? That was uh, Matt, huh? No, eight was, was David, Dark and Stormy. 
Oh, okay. It says Dwight looks like he's ready to fall asleep during the therapy talk. The YouTube podcast vids have been amazing as I can watch them on my TV while working. Looks great on the new big TV. Uh, I love how you can see when either of you either get super interested or check out or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can't Dwight, hide that anymore. Dwight, you look especially young and thin on it. I mean, Eric, you and me are buds and I love you. The last three episodes have been really, really good though. Anyway, can't wait for the show on Saturday. This was right before our live stream. That's why I'm trying to catch up. I've been working for home for over a month now, and attending concerts online has been a huge release. I'm glad you're doing an early show, as I'd already purchased a ticket for a later show that evening for a different musician. Interesting, right? Finally, I checked out the Dwight's 90s Rabbit Hole playlist on Spotify, and I loved it. But I also took it as a challenge and said, challenge accepted. I put together a 90-minute playlist of some of my own favorite 90s songs. I am uh, texting that to Patty right now so she can add it to it. It says, okay, hope y'all are well, Eric. Thank you, Eric, again for another great email. Right? Right. Okay, let me text that to you real quick because I will forget. Okay. Okay, that is texted. Or you'll um, delete let's... it. You'll just delete it. That will definitely happen. All right, one more, one more email, okay? Okay. Uh, this is from Sarah Bonza from Nottingham, UK. Now, was Nottingham where we went? And um, I mean, I didn't dance, but the rest of y'all danced to that great kind of folk, funk soul band. Was that Not Nottingham? Was that Nottingham? That little pub. I, I know oh, man. Um, that was a great night with the boys you know you don't always get on that size tour you don't always get away from the venues or off the bus or whatever but that night in particular we went and had a really good meal with our buddy Sam from from Stereophonics crew that and, bar uh, is called Black Lion was it in not and in it was him? in Brighton ah Brighton okay the Black well, Lion in Brighton night night. yep yep but y'all should go there, and then there's a funk band that plays theirs on on Sunday nights. I think it was Sundays when they have bands again, and it was so good. Anyway, um, it says, hiya. Hi, both. Hope you're both keeping okay through these crazy times. Saw you once again in Nottingham in March. Great set as usual. Sounded amazing. I'll get Dwight's compliments out of the way first. One, beard looking real good. Again, see, that's what I'm saying. Old, gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, Sorry. it's gone. Um, it's just too gray. I, it, it does look okay on my face. I don't mind having a beard, but fuck, it's so gray. I just can't deal with it right now. Um, your total Would you ever honesty, dye your beard? We've tried. Oh, it doesn't look you very You and Sarah natural. have tried? Yeah. Have you ever seen, even, we've tried so many different ways. And, and frankly, I know other people that have tried. And every time they try, I look at them and I go, mm, what are you doing? That looks doing? weird. It's, you can dye hair. Beards get weird. In movies, they have this kind of paint on stuff that they do just for the day that they can make look very natural because it doesn't have to hold up. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. But, but yeah, but the rest of the time, it's how you can see like Alec Baldwin and he's got no beard, no gray in his beard on a movie. And then two weeks later, you see him, he's fucking full gray because, yeah. you know, movie magic. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, Two, your total honesty is refreshing. Thank you. Three, the hair flips after your workouts. Well, winky face. Hey, she likes my, I don't know what my hair flips are. I must, I must be pushing my sweaty yeah, hair you're back. Yeah, like, you're but, like doing this action. But probably what happens is yeah. this thing pops out. Like oh. it goes like, ooh. Pop. It goes like pop like that. And then you see the actual four. Right. You see the... Uh, or, or if I do it with this side, you're like, oh, is he tatted too? Oh, that's Stop. his left. Stop. How is it that big? Put it I, down. You know. Yeah, well, anyway, <clears throat> Patty has three compliments again as well. Oh. Again, honesty and keeping it real. Two, sorry, same as everyone, amazing bloody voice. Three, as an amazing dog, we love Trip. <laughs> we love him so much. Uh, I have mixed feelings about Trip, but you know, I'm glad everyone else likes him. And you know, I think I have mixed like feelings a, about everyone that I love, so that's okay. Yeah, 
it's not a, it's not a, by the way, it's not when I say, oh, same as everyone else. It's not a, I'm not saying you can't say that she has an amazing voice. Of course she does. That's the why, that's why we are where we are. But um, I'm just pointing it out that people like to just say that about you all the time. Um, okay, here goes with a few questions, if you don't mind. One, when and how did you become friends with the god, Kelly Jones? Uh, well, okay, sorry. By the way, can you hear my stomach? It's being so loud right now. Gosh, I'm yep. sorry. Yep. Um, Tell that story. It's a great story. The Philly story? When you, of when we met Kelly, yeah. <laughs> Tell the story. Um, well, first of all, well, we toured with them like seven years ago on the Graffiti on the Train tour. And it started in the United States, started in Philadelphia. And we didn't have very much time to prepare for that tour because I think maybe someone else had had to leave the tour last minute. And at the time we had the same booking agent. So our booking agent presented us as an option. I, I guess they listened and they were like, yeah, that sounds great. And so we we hightailed our asses to Philly like overnight or like something. It's just three days, three, three days, days after getting the offer. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I'm at the front of the venue. I'm setting up merch. I'm like up on a chair and I'm like pinning the shirts up to this, up on this gate. And the, the whole stereophonic span, uh, mind you, I had up until that point, I had not even heard of stereophonics or Kelly Jones or, so I didn't know anything about them, but I knew that they were important when they walked in the door because of how they carry themselves yeah. and they've got, you know, they've got their in-ears and they're just like, they're here, they're, they're here and they're going to sound check and they're walking in the door and I see them walk in. Kelly's like, I think in the front. Well, security is, security's yeah. next to them, you know. I'm like, ooh, there's, those are people, they're important, there's someone. And he stops and he looks up, he said, right, you selling a merch? Or something, something super British. Like Let me that. translate. What she said was, "Right, are you selling the merch?" Right. And again, I don't know. I don't know them. I don't. I'm not starstruck because I don't know who they are. But I know they're important. So I get nervous, and I'm just like, "Uh huh." And he was like, "Right," and then like kept walking on to sound check. And then I was like, "Oh shit." He thinks I'm the merch girl. And I was like, and I was like, wait, wait. And I wasn't really like, wait. I was just like, shit. He thinks I'm in the your merch head girl. going, you're panicking, going, yes. wait, wait. He thinks I'm not that there's anything wrong with being the merch girl, but I'm, I'm also singing on the stage. I'm also opening for you. And yes, I am the merch girl in a lot of ways, but I'm also opening for you. God damn it. So yeah. then, just later that evening, I think I think he like saw us. Sound check. Yeah, he watched us something? the first. You know, he watched us the watched first the night, show, yeah. and then like after the show, came to our green room, and he was he was embarrassed. He was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." I thought, and I was like, "No, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm an idiot." Yeah. yeah. Two things about that. One, um, in those days, Patty and I toured in a beat up white van mm -hmm. by ourselves, just me and her. <laughs> so all the things tour managing was me and setting up merch and selling merch was her and it was crazy out there but fun I have good memories about those days and two Kelly has been that nice to us and the whole band as nice as they were the first night every time since and uh has watched our show every time we've played with him he watches every 60 or 70 percent of our show until he has to hit, go hit the warm-up room every time. He says he likes to get a feel for the room, but I've asked, he doesn't watch every other band. But he does watch our show, and it makes me feel special. So mm. just a good thing about Kelly that you guys would want to know. Okay, does social media add more pressure to bands, i.e. feeling they have to interact with fans on a regular basis? That's a pretty good question. I think you should go first. Well, I'm kind of bad at social media anyway. Well, I just and your learned. your account is private, right? Is it still private? No, I unprivate. I unprivated it. Oh. Well, because I had a lot of people that were into this felt stallion stuff, motivationally, and so I, I was like, oh fuck, I'll open it up for a little while, and uh, that's where I first learned how to do stories. My kids and you were like, you gotta, you can't put that stuff in your feed every time. You gotta put it on your story. That's a better place for those type of things. I was like, I don't even It'll know how get, to do a story. Yeah. 
I don't even know how to do a story. So I figured out how to do those and I still suck at them, but. No, you're a story you know, pro. I'm, and now you can do the live and, right, I'm kind and of a, IGTV, which you didn't, you just figured out right. the other day. Yeah. So I'm, but I'm kind of funny in front of a screen cause I'm a ham. And, yeah. and so it's been fun to do that. So I enjoy when I actually go online, I want to, and I find it fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, to, to Cause my, my person, a little bit party Dwight comes out. He's like, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey. yeah, yeah. Especially if I've got a beer or something, but my thing, but that's like, that's inter- it's in showbiz. It's I entertainment, know. you know, just like when I go on stage, but you know, the other thing is, is I, um, uh, I like, uh, I like Q and a when I'm live. I do like that. I like being able to interact immediately with people. It's mm-hmm. the same trip I get when I play live. So I do like it when, when I can, I wish I could do this in front of people. It would, the podcast? It would be, yeah. Cause I like communicate. I like, I would love to take c- crowd crowd questions right well, now. Well, you know, we have talked about that doing live podcasts, like kind of a combo of like performance slash podcast, maybe with some other musicians live in a small room here in Austin. Yeah. We have talked well, about and then that. The, and, the, and then the world fell apart. Um, but, but on socials, I follow literally Patty, the wind and the wave, both my kids and my wife's salon. That's it. So I don't, what, what are your thoughts on social media? In general? Well, do you, does it add more pressure? I'm going to ask her a question. Does it add okay. more pressure? Do you feel like you have to interact on a regular basis with fans? Cause you do um, the majority of our socials in terms of the wind and waves voice. That's mostly you. I mean, I think like you said, like you said about tooting your own horn in the music business, right? No one's going to toot it for you. Um, you do kind of have to be a little, you could do kind of have to be present and let people know what's up. And even when you do that, it's still hard to reach the people. So you do kind of have to be active. It doesn't mean you always have to be interactive. It doesn't always mean you have to be liking every comment and replying to every comment, though I do that often. Um, it's the only way for us to reach people anymore. Yeah. That's it. For the most part, I would say I enjoy it and I don't feel a lot of pressure to do it. Um, yeah. Okay. But I, uh, I do take, you think. Sorry. Go ahead. Hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm thinking. No, I mean, if someone says something weird, I'll ignore it. Or if, you know, like, I hate it when people are like, uh, like my page, like my page. Oh, yeah. I, like, that's, I, ha- that's I hate instant, that Instant shit. ignore. Yeah. Instant ignore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you think you will get back to the UK for a solo tour at some point? Uh, we've talked about this before. Of course we will. Once we're allowed to tour, we'll probably come back over as a duo first and then maybe do some shows with our new thing with Kelly and then probably come back as a band and then, you know. It's become our second home for us. Love the podcast. Looking forward to Patty's new adventure with the Feelings Club. Looking forward to new music and hopefully seeing you live again. She would take both. Sarah Bonzer, Nottingham, UK. Okay. Uh, if you get us out in two minutes, you won't have to do any adjustment <laughs> for your IGTV vid. So take oh, us we out. We have two babe. minutes to get to an hour. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please leave us a review wherever you listen to this podcast and send us an email to the Dwight and Patty show at gmail.com. Consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the Dwight and Patty show for juicy treats like unreleased demos, early access to final versions of songs, discount codes, and more. Follow us on Instagram, duh, at the Dwight and Patty show. You can now watch this podcast on YouTube, Facebook, and IGTV and give us all the likes on all the things. Thank you so much. Bye. I mean, so goddamn professional. Bye. It's the Dwight and Patty Show. The Dwight and Patty Show. It's the Dwight and